I remember him leading me into the tent. It, it just felt like I was being like led, you know, like I was being led to, you know, like I knew I was gonna like die or something, or like I was being led to the slaughter, you know? Well, I can look back now, I don't really understand, but you know, it started pulling me and getting aroused and whatever, and then his eyes changed to like hate, mm -hmm. you know, like anger, mm -hmm. hate, you know, and, and then he just forced me, push my head down and forced me to have oral sex, but you know, it wasn't oral sex. I mean, he like put his weight on me and had intercourse with my face. And I like, I don't know if I passed out or if I like totally disassociated or whatever, you know, but I wake up, he's on top of me and he's wearing the collar and he's got his hands around my throat and he's pushing me as hard as he can into the, uh, into the ground, you know, saying, say it, say it. Like I, I came out of whatever I was in and I think he was trying to get me to say I wouldn't tell or something like that. And, and I remember in that time feeling like I'm not gonna get out of this. Like I'm totally alone, I'm not gonna get out of this. You know, like I, I thought he was gonna kill me. And I didn't even really, re you know, I, I just couldn't believe, like he broke me, you know, totally broke me. I got in there, my brother was already in there. He didn't look good. He was looking at me, he looked kind of stunned or whatever. And I was trying to put my Self in between uh, my brother and Father Jerry. I have a, a trip out when I see, you know, four year old kids. I'm like, I, I, just, I can't even fathom as an adult how somebody could do that. But uh, I needed to, you know, protect my brother, and that was sort of like the only. And when it happened the first time, I'm like, I gotta protect my family, you know, this guy's crazy, and, and there's. <clears throat> I was pretty strong, you know, against him. And then he broke me and I just kind of let myself down, you know, let my family down. And in there in that tent, I'm like, I'm gonna try to help my brother or whatever. And he did the same thing to me. He started, he made us touch each other and he made us do oral sex, you know. And then he uh, did the same thing to me that he did before. And I kind of had the same thing. I, I don't know if, I, I don't know what happened. I just blacked out. And, you know, and I wake up, I'm on my stomach facing my brother, and he's got our hands up, and he's sodomizing me, and he's got his hand on my throat, and I'm looking in my brother's eyes, and I'm losing my bladder on my brother, and my brother's, my brother's just looking up at me like, you know, He had no idea what was going on and why it was happening. And he was looking at me like, you know, why is this happening? And I'm just, and I'm, I'm like at that point just, I'm not even present, you know. <sighs> I didn't want to get this upset. <sighs> well, we can never tell anybody about this. And we buried it. We buried it. I'm like, we can never tell anybody. And my brother had no, you know, I'm trying to think about, I mean, at least I was old enough to know what was going on, that it was wrong. And my brother had no idea. <sighs> my brother and I don't speak. We don't have anything to do with each other. Um, you know, we've had a strained relationship over the years. We try to be there for each other, but it's very, um, there's just this component, you know, every time we see each other, it's a reminder of stuff that happened and uncomfortable things. Because I've just felt like I can't stand, I've had times in my life, I'm like, I cannot stand to be 
me, like to be, you know, to be present, like I just can't stand it. I, I can't explain it. I mean, it's almost like my, my skin's crawling. Like I just can't stand to have to be living as me. I blocked that stuff out and basically proceeded for years to just abuse myself. I was rebellious, you know, against every kind of authority. I mean, coaches, doctors, teachers, police, anybody that was trying to tell me to do something, I'm just like, you can't make me do it. You're going to punish me? Punish me. You can't hurt me. You can't take me. You can't. There's nothing you can do to me. As soon as it came out and we came to terms with what, what had happened and, and stuff, um, I just told my brother, I'm like, we got to stop this guy. I was naive. I thought that justice would be served. I thought that right would be done and that I trusted the system and I trusted the players in the game. It didn't do anything to to fix it, it just didn't help anything. And there's no amount of money that could help me for what I want. You know, I, I didn't really feel like even even though I thought we had accomplished more than we had, I still didn't feel like there was justice or that society was really being protected from this guy. I did everything I could do under the law. Where does my moral obligation to myself, you know, to society, to protect society from him, supersede the law of the land, you know, and his rights in a situation where the system is debunked. The first time in my life, I have, I have a voice, you know, I, I'm empowered and I'm kind of in charge of my destiny and that's kind of all I've ever wanted, you know.